Hi, welcome to Building SaaS with Python and Django. My name is Matt Lehman, and we work on a Django app or Django apps that I've got going. And we're going to continue on some of those apps this evening uh, and continue on the social networking app that uh, I'm working on. If this is your first time joining us, thank you. Um, I have a bunch of ways you can keep in touch with me. There's a link above to mattlehman.com where you can connect with me. I have got social accounts at mblehman. There's a Discord below. There's tons of ways that you can find me on the internet. Um, and if you're finding value, content valuable uh, and you want to decide to contribute later on, um, I have a Patreon as well. Um, that's patreon.com slash mblayman. So uh, thanks to my patrons, Rupert, Abdulaziz, Patrick, Mark, and Eric for your contributions. And um, yeah, thanks for what you do. So let's get started with the social network here and get into it. I last time worked on um, some of the form that was going to be needed to send a social network uh, invitation and didn't get down to the template. And that you, you can see with this issue, that's the remaining piece that I have to do. So I want to start by um, crafting a template and, and everything that it's going to say and put it in the context. Uh, and that's the plan. And we'll see how far we get. I might cut it a little short this evening. I stayed up really late watching U.S. election coverage last night, so I'm feeling a little fatigued. Uh, so my energy uh, might might not last super long. But um, you're welcome to ask me anything about Python, Django, or web development. Let's uh, let's steer clear of U.S. politics, shall we? Thanks. Um, okay. Let's jump over to here and figure out where we are. So I, I said I was working on a form last time that had to do all the checking of when you're permitted to send an invitation to a user on the social network. And uh, again, if this is the first time you're joining in, the social network is all about limiting the number of connections that you can have on purpose. And it's, it's to a pretty high number. It's still like 500 connections or something like that. Um, but trying to make sure that your social network is not a megaphone where you're just blasting out to a community, um, and instead focusing on the real connections you care about. And some of the schemes that I have devised to ensure that that happens is to make uh, invitations be really important um, in this process. And if you create an invitation and the uh, user on the other side um, doesn't uh, connect with you, that'll actually be a strike against you as, as a user. It'll be count as one of your connections. So, um, Explaining that concept is really important uh, to uh, make sure that people understand what's going to be valuable about the social network um, and also being really clear on how many uh, invitations and connections a user has left and you know just everything around that to really communicate to the user that, hey, this, this is meaningful. This is not like something you should do flippantly. Um, so I have the views and I'm in the wrong app, so let's jump over to the right right view. And it's the send invite view. And we put this form together to build all this context. And so that we have a bunch of data in here with a send template. And you can see that my send template isn't actually doing anything at the moment. So we're going to uh, change that so that it actually takes the data from the form and renders any of the errors that are there. So the first thing that the form does is it's a little bit different from a standard Django form is it does all of the error checking to check, are you is this user allowed to send to another user? And I don't want to display that in like an aggressive, angry error message tone. So it's going to be kind of different. Um, it's going to be meant to be like the inline messages. And if there are errors um, from the form, then a user won't be allowed to actually send the invitation. And it'll tell them why of like, you've got too many connections or too many things are open or whatever it is, uh, is largely driven by the form. And it will cause the uh, the button that will be there to actually do the sending to be um, disabled. And um, then if they are able to send, then none of those conditions should be true. And it should be this informative message of, hey, you're about to send this to such and such user. And, you know, after if this is how many connections you have. So you're going to be basically spending one of your connections if you do that. And are you OK with that? Um, so that's kind of the context of what this form is about. Again, if you have any questions, um, I am open to answering them. And it doesn't have to be about this social network. I'm here to answer about web development, too, and, and my knowledge with Django. So I, I'm willing to field other questions that are outside of the scope of this. But you know, I gotta have something to talk about while I'm here, so this is why we're working on this particular project. 
let's take a look at the data that exists there and see what we can see. So I'm going to turn on debug toolbar and run the local web server using Heroku Local. And we'll jump over to the app. And I think the only other thing that I can comment on that I did last time, like, so after, after last stream, there were a few changes that I made. Um, and one of them is, uh, what else did I do? I, I did some validation on the form, some extra stuff that I said that was going to be some boring checking. So if you're interested, um, I've got this app is on MB Layman Social. If you want to go check out the code and all the commits, and I'll share the link in the chat. Um, so you're welcome to check that out. Um, but I made some other changes, and I was wondering, like, what what kind of style do I want this app to be? I want it to be very low key, and so I want the like landing page the marketing page to be a very simple message of here's here's why this network is different here's why it's potentially interesting to people so landing page is a th thing that i did the other thing that i did ironically is we talked about um, budgets and iconography and i said you know it's, it's likely something that i want to pay for and i had this like thought come into my head of like hey, you know what i'm going to try this and see if i can do this myself to make an icon. So I took a stab at making an icon and it might look similar to a certain retail brand in the US that you might recognize. I recognize that so hopefully I don't get dinged by that in the future but going for um, this idea of when I described how the application is meant to be and I've got that in the readme if you want to like read about the rules and stuff is I described the permissions scheme that I want for this social network. And that social network concept is that you have your inner circle of, of your closest friends and then like a, a medium level circle and then your outer circle. And I want the permissions to be limited to those three stages on inter and that will affect um, visibility of what people are allowed to see and not see and, and all of that kind of stuff. It's going to play a big part in that. And so um, I did some thinking and said like well what if I tried to translate this concept directly into some circle so you got your inner circle which I and the way I'm steering clear of the large retailer is by trying to change the colors I don't I don't know if they're going to buy that um, but uh, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm going for here is, is conveying this concept of three circles that are core to the permissions scheme and then you know it's also my working name for this product is now social circle rather than just social network that I had before. Um, I was originally, I originally had a, a name for the app in mind. Uh, and my, my working name that I was going thinking of using was uh, Rolodex uh, life. Um, but as I did my homework, I realized that Rolodex is a registered trade name to a certain company. So Rolodex is not something that I could have used even though that domain was available. Um, so I'm using this as my working title. We'll, we'll see if it sticks, but it feels good for now. So that's the context of other things that I've done. Um, the funny part is like even after that discussion about budget, by creating a logo myself, I probably saved myself uh, 30 to $50 or something like that by not going to Fiverr and having that done by a different group. Um, so that's that's get that gets you back up to speed with where I am, and let's sign into the app. I haven't styled the sign-in page, which is why it just looks like complete garbage. Um, but ooh, what is the name of the email account that I did? Testing at somewhere, or I know that's the name for my other app. I don't know if I shared the same name. Uh, oh, oh, that's because I'm signing up. Login. Let's go to login. Um. So I think I just said me and then said witty my password that I use for a lot of junk stuff, which I was just about to verbalize, but not that it would matter. But um, anyway, so this is the username is me, which is a terrible username, um, but it's enough that we can now go to this other page that I've that I have already styled, and so this is the kind of the flow that a user would have. They'd they'd find out a different user's username. They'd go to the website and say, "Okay, let me search down Matt," and I want to send them an invite. 
and the invite is going to send them to this link. And here is where we can check out um, the Django debug toolbar and see that we should have a form in the context. And it is a bound form, so it's got data, and we can check if there are any errors on it. And if there are errors, then we want to display them. Um, if not, we don't want to display them. So um, one way that I can force an error is, is one of the conditions I said you can't do is you can't invite yourself. So if we bring this back up and look at the form, um, well, I guess it's not showing that in the repr, uh, in the representation. So we need to like loop over these things. So it's still a bound form, um, but you can't invite yourself. So that's we'll we'll do we'll start with this page um, because it lets us see what um, you know that there will be errors that we can loop through, and then we can work from that and like work from the negative case and then work back to the the positive simple case. So we're going to go back to the app here, and the first thing we're going to do on this view is we're going to set the title, and that's a block that I've created in the base template called title, and we'll say, um, what do I have the user? So I don't have the user to invite in the context, so there's a piece of information already that we're missing. Um, so we need to add that to the context because I want to be able to say you're about to connect to such and such uh, and that's that's not there so far um, and you can see that the to user is right here um, so we need to do what do, do, do. I guess I want to probably extract the two user, I don't want it to happen just on get requests. Well, do I? Yeah, that's probably fine. No, it's not. Because here, here we get to the bottom here. We've got the context, which is a dictionary. And if I add, I want to be able to add the user that we care about to the context. And if I, if I do this and um, then don't have the two user outside of this if statement, what's going to happen is um, a form post could come through to the bottom and be invalid and then try to re-render and it's going to hit an un, um, a name error or an unreferenced, what is the, um, when you have a local variable that doesn't have, uh, that isn't associated to a name um, because the two user variable name wouldn't be in scope because of this this block would not be called on a post request okay so let's let's move that up and move it out here so that it's always available and this is this is something that's true anyway like if there's not a username like from the path that is ex an existing user then it doesn't make sense to proceed and the the whole view is uh, is is a 404 and that would be accurate so I think it's okay to extract it to that level and um, the other thing we can do um, is what we can um, put it in the form in the form excuse me the uh, context so let's add it here as to user and we'll say to user so now we have this in our context and it should be available to us to set as the name and we should say this is um, send invite, whoops, invite to, to user, because it should be in the context now. And the title is the part that you probably actually can't even see on the temp on my browser, because I think I hide my tabs. Um, but I'll, I'll move my browser down for a second so we can see it. We're gonna come back here and I'm gonna refresh this page. And it's gonna take a little longer because I'm running the debug toolbar. And the debug tool, toolbar has a bunch of extra stuff that it collects. Uh, so that might be why it just is delayed. Um, I don't know why it does that exactly. It's probably just running extra analysis that it has to put in this um, sidebar here uh, to make sure you have the diagnostics that you need. So it can run slower, but if I move my browser down you should be able to see, and if you can't, let me know, um, that 
I've now got this title set to send invite to me. And remember, me is the name of the logged in user in this context. So it's a little, or it's the, so excuse me, it's the name of the user that we're trying to invite, um, which is this um, URL attribute here. So that, that worked and that was correct. And I want to make sure, because so now, there, now there's a connection between my template and my context. And because that, that uh, requirement is there, I want to be able to solidify that in my tests so that if I ever removed it, um, or if I ever tried to remove it, my test would fail and say, wait a minute, you've got, you've got context here that your template's probably depending on, so you need to be careful. So let's go to uh, the uh, test views for this view. And we're going to go to the context and we're going to assert that the to user is in the context. So we're going to say um, self get context to user. That's the name that's going to look for in the context. And we already have the to user. And that test still passes. So we're, we're in good shape. And OK, what's next? The other thing that I included in my app template is a main section, I believe. Yeah, so I've got this main container, which is a, a way to use the um, container styling from Tailwind. And the container styling is, is, it, is it fits your app within a, a realistic bounding box at certain breakpoints. Um, what the best way that I can show that probably is to include a background color that's like really obvious. So let's say background red 500 or something like that and refresh this page. Okay, so now you can see right away that this is the container from Tailwind. And if we bring up the dev tools and go into, well, I guess I can just resize the browser. So as it reaches certain breakpoints, Tailwind will resize this container to be smaller and smaller. And at a certain size, it says like, wait a minute, you must be on a mobile size. So let's remove this um, margin that is on the either uh, horizontal side uh, so that you can have as much real estate as possible. So it's just trying to give you a good size area, a container, um, fittingly named, that will be appropriate for your content. And so that's all of the um, the view stuff that, that we add in will be uh, within that bounding box. So just want to make sure that that's really clear what that CSS class is doing before we get too far along in here. And the, I guess the other po important point to call out is that I'm using MX Auto to make sure that the spacing on either side is equal. If I left um, so let's put the red background back in here and let's delete the MX auto stuff um, and then refresh it. And what you'll see is it all moves over, I guess, over your direction that way um, because you're saying you don't want the, the margin to be auto sized on both sides. So because of that, it's just fitting into that box and putting it right to slamming it to the left left side of the page. So the, the container and the MX Auto are working in conjunction with each other. So that's my container. And I've got a main block in here. And so we need to define our main block for what we want to put in here. So we've got a block main. And I need to close it because it'll just blow up on me. And I need to use the right character. Come on, Matt. So now we have the place where the actual invitation information is going to go. Um, and again, I want this, I, the way I want this social network to feel is I want it to feel really light. Like I don't want to have a ton of information. I don't want to be slamming users with like all this visual clutter. Um, in my mind, having these simple pages, in fact, the, like the one we saw with, uh, what was it? 5,000 users, Matt or users, no, not me, users, Matt, come on. 
So this 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 is the kind of simplicity I'm talking about. Very very minimalistic, and I don't know. Maybe it's it's the aesthetic that I'm going for now. Maybe you don't like it, but uh, I've got to pick a style. <laughs> so that's what I'm choosing to do. And because of that, I've got my main block. And I should be able to refresh this, and that red goes away. So I want to say something very similar. The this send invitation form needs to be informative but simple. So I want to use the same name uh, as I've gotten the title, and I want to constrain the width of of the form to a reasonable amount of space. So let's do both of those things. Let's um. I think we're okay with the view and the context for now, so I'm going to replace that here with uh, something better to look at. So let's use the user detail um, thing and, and use that to guide us here. Um, so my last form was a max width of small, and I centered the text. I don't know that I want to center my text this time, but this will be a good starting point. So let's start with a div. And we'll give it a class, and it's going to be centered again. So we want MX Auto, which is doing the horizontal centering. And we're going to give it a max width of small. And within here, so let's end the div to end the container. And I want to use the same style um, header as I've got here. So we've got that. And I'm going to change the text of that to be send invite man I really can't type that word to to user so hopefully ooh that looks not so not so good this time the difference is the last my last one is like I, I centered everything because it's so simple it's a single sentence um, but that's not gonna work because I'm gonna have more to say this time and my prediction is that I'll have enough to say that the text is going to wrap. And when you have a text wrap, and I don't know if this is a design thing or if this is my style, I'm not sure. When you have a text wrap and you center it, you, you get, I mean, it looks kind of like poetry, which isn't so bad, but people aren't used to reading that way. Uh, certainly not English speakers. Obviously, there's some languages that read on the opposite side. Um, but your average language does not have like variable lengths of line going up and down and kind of making a vase shape. Um, that's that's atypical. So what I'm going to do is add a text center to the actual header tag because I do like the look of that for the, the header tag. Um, so that should move it back to the middle. Um, I'm still not... So the other thing to observe here is that send invite to is taking up a lot of real estate. And so this works because me is a short username, but um, you know, what if the username was something much longer, like uh, my name is crazy, you know, something, something I'm not being very clever. Um, but that that doesn't work nearly as well. And I don't want this to by default wrap to a second line. Um, so there's probably like somewhere in between that's that's reasonable. So I'll I'll use well let's do a couple that are this is my handle that I go through with a lot of stuff. So even that is too long. So I want to change this to a max width of uh, medium to try. Let's try that. So that fits, but just barely. Uh, and I have a feeling that if I go to, instead of MB Layman, if I, let's say I did Matthew Layman. Um, yeah, that's, again, gets too long. So, um, so I want this to fit in a reasonable amount. So let's try a large and see if that'll work. Okay. And I think, you know, there are definitely users out there that like longer usernames. So this is what, uh, seven, 13 characters. And so that's probably about the max that I want to support right now. And if you go longer than that, as we can saw, it's not the end of the world if it wraps to two lines, but uh, that's, that's decent. So now we go back to the placeholder that I had and put our two user back. 
and it's going to look a little strange because me is so short, but I think it's okay. And what else do we need to say? So the first thing to check is if there are any errors, right? Um, so we've got our form in the context. And we can say if form errors. Oops, can't do it like that. It's an attribute that the Django form will have if it's invalid. And again, we're trying. We're on the same page as me, so it's gonna, one of the errors at least should be you cannot invite yourself. And so let's say for because errors can be a list of errors, but we have to do a for loop. So for error in errors uh, nope in form dot errors we want to um let me use, just use a p tag and say error right now okay hmm that's that's not right so that's the key for errors um let's see so errors I guess is actually a dictionary so really let me let me rethink this I think it's actually not we don't want this um, let's go back to the view for a second and nope let's go to the form my form is using a single clean method so when you have a clean method unless you are using the add error API. So there is an error API, it's called form add error that you can use in the clean method. And so, wow, that my uh, chat thing is really formatting that in a funny way. Um, form add error will allow you to specify an error into the errors uh, dictionary with a certain key. And um, you may want to do that, like if, let's say, in my clean method, I had a problem with the from user, and from user is uh, one of my form fields over here. So I, I might apply an error specifically to the form user. But by default, that's not the behavior. Like, uh, you know, if you look at the, the way that um, form validation works, the, the thing that they commonly suggest is to raise a validation error. Okay, and when you raise the validation error, it it puts uh, the error message not into a specific key um, that corresponds to any of your form fields. It puts it, this into this specially named key. This is uh, double underscore all double underscore, and a lot of times in Python we'll just say dunder for the double underscore. So dunder all is what what that might be commonly called. So there is another API here that that if you want to access the all the error messages that go with that are with the key dunder all, then you can call form non field errors. All right, and that should give you all anything that was put in this catch all bucket. So really, in my form over here, I want to check the non-field errors. And that should really be the list of the things that I have because that's what is really, that my form is really using. Now, this would, this strategy would break if I decided to actually make this send invite form use specific form fields. I don't think I will because, you know, just look at the way it's designed. Um, I don't think that that's really necessary for this. It's only checking two different form fields, but I'd have to revisit that in the future. So now if I refresh this, we should um, we should get the actual error message. You may not invite yourself. You're already here. Okay, great. So I think that's what I want. And I think, um, let me see, all of these rays... These all raise a form error. 
or excuse me, a validation error, which means that there's only ever going to be one of them. If I, which is not optimal, <laughs> usually people like to see all of their error messages at once, but um, that's what I'm choosing to do this for now. And so I don't need to make this have a bunch of padding. I guess I could. Uh, it's not super important. But let's take the style that's over... Um, well, yeah, we can we can work with the same style that's in my other template, which is using MB8 text gray 800. Okay. So it was hard to really see what changed when I refreshed. The, the text went slightly lighter, and there's now margin below it that you can't tell yet. OK, the other thing that we need to do is, so if there are form errors, we want to show a disabled button. Um, I don't, I haven't made a disabled style yet, so we're going to have to play with that. And I'm, I don't even know, Tailwind, uh, disabled. Okay, so Tailwind does have a disabled, no, they just made their own styles. Oh, these are examples. Okay. So the way that they did this is they used the cursor not allowed class and then they changed oh i see they set the opacity to 50 percent to kind of dull it out hmm i don't know that i want to do that but okay it's a start so let's come down here and um yeah the other part i don't like about this I'm thinking it through here because I could make a something that looks like a disabled button if it but if it's still clickable that's not any good so I think the way to make sure that it stays not clickable is by keeping the type submit off of it so that it's just a useless button so that it looks like it it's the right thing but it's not actually so let's take the style that's over on this link and put it down below. And let's just see what it looks like in here and make sure that it, it fits in there to start. Ooh, um, no, it doesn't because I have the, the wrong thing here. So let's take out the URL that's looking for data that's not available. And let's put a placeholder. It's going to get deleted anyway. Okay, so the style is correct. Um, the other thing I want to do, now that we've got it to this state, let's go ahead and change it to a button. And see, sometimes the changing it to a button, like, influences... Yeah, that was weird. Um, gave it... It either messed with, like, the block or inline block, I'm not really sure, but it bumped the padding down farther, which was unusual or surprising so the top is now there but that's okay the other one's going to be a button too so it doesn't really it's not super important um in either in either case so now we can get rid of the href stuff and we can come in here and i want to delete the hover because we don't want it to show anything differently on the hover all right, so those should be okay. I also don't want to have any focus behavior. So now like we've lost all of the, the fancy effect that comes with it when you mouse over something. And we want to add the extra stuff that makes it look like it's not clickable. So let's try what they did with opacity 50. And uh, what was the other class? Cursor, not something. Cursor, not allowed.
All right, let's try try that. And the other thing I noticed is that the context name is not correct. So we want to switch it to to user because that's who we're trying to send to. Okay. Great. So this is the error message. It doesn't have any of the extra copy that is going to explain what this is about. Um, but we have the valid style and I can click this all day long. It's not doing anything. So that's what we want there. Um, the other thing we need is the other, the other scenario when there's not, when, um, there are not problems and <clears throat> we'll, um, we'll get that in place and then we'll come back and we'll fill in the copy that goes with the actual thing. Um, with the rest of the form, sorry. And that should be good. So we need to wrap this in a form because the button button has to exist inside of the form. And I want the method to equal post. And because I want the form submission to come to the same URL, I could set that by setting the action directly. So there's an action attribute, which is expecting like a URL. Um, but if you leave action out, it uses the same URL as where um, where you currently are in your browser. And so I wanted that to be the same. So I'm going to take this uh, content and somehow if form errors got the indent got different. And so now this is going to go inside of the form. And there we have that. And the other thing I want is to come down to here. Actually, we're done with the form itself for a moment. And I want to take this again. We've got the button. And so this is actually the else case now. So when there's an else, it's going to just show the button. And the button is going to be valid. And so we'll switch it to a button. and. I want to get rid of the anchor and change it to type equal submit, which is telling you that this is the button to actually submit the form and change this to button as well. Okay, come back over here and refresh and it should still be like the um, unclickable one because we're still on the me page. But if I change this now and go to Matt instead of me, ooh, why is it saying, oh, you already sent an invitation. Ha, look at this. It's working. The er different error messages are appearing. Okay, but that's not what we want to see. So let's go to the admin site and go down to the invites and delete the existing invite here because we don't, don't need it. Yeah, let's get that out of here. So coming back to this, refresh. Ah, so that was wrong because we didn't, I forgot to fix the context name here as well. So we've got the valid button. And I think that I said on this when, when the form, when the view completes, we're going to send, and now I think we've we've actually pulled everything that we care about from this other template. There's there's nothing else here that's unique, so we can actually go back to the view now. Um, so when the form is successful, we should be redirected back to our index page that uh, is going to be like home base when when it's built out, and there should be a message that's added. So I think we're 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 just missing the actual like copy on this and the rest of this is what I want it to be so far. So let's try it out. Let's do like this is like an end to end test kind of thing that you know somebody came to actually let's even go full fuller. So I am me and I want to connect with Matt. A different Matt, I guess. And so I send invite to Matt. It takes me to this send invite to Matt page. Imagine 
there will be some invitation information here of like here's what you're about to do and here's how many connections you have left and do you are you sure you want to do this um or or go ahead and send this to matt to have him join your network or whatever and the user clicks the button nope failed all right forgot an obvious thing obvious to me maybe not obvious to you if you're new to django but this is this is why we're here right so i forgot the csrf token the csrf token so let's refresh this page get back a new um a new view of this so i refreshed it but we can go check out the page source and see what it's got in there a csrf token or that particular template tag is something that's built into django templates and it adds a hidden input to the form. And this is for cross-site request forgery protection. I don't have time tonight to go into what CSRF is. It is a, it's a security feature of Django. We'll leave it at that. So if you want to learn more, um, go look up a CSRF protection. Uh, you can look at, uh, I think the Django docs have some information on it. You can also check out OWASP, which is a uh, online web security group, uh, web application security something, and they they talk all about CSRF. So that'll give you all the de the gory details on what that protection does. But whenever we have a form, the thing we have to know is we have to add this special token there to work to work with it. It basically means that Django is going to trust the content that you're sending it. Uh, so now. We've got this, we can click this button. The user is invalid. Ooh, why did that happen? Did I, no, the user is invalid. Why are you invalid? Because I think that's the error message from my form. Hmm, that's not right. Let's go back to the forms, figure out what's going on. Check. Ooh. That's no good. Ah. I. <laughs> no wonder it didn't work. It didn't work because I didn't actually put the data in there. That was dumb. So, what do we want? We want what's missing is the actual from user and to user that are part of the context are not actually in the form. And this is where we're gonna to need to probably mess with the form widget as well, because I have a feeling what's gonna happen if I just try and put it in there is it's gonna say, nope. And then it's gonna show me like a drop down that we don't actually want in there. Um, Cause remember all of this information is like, it's like pre, it's like a pre-filled form for you. And you're really, the really only need to be clicking a button is the ideal way to go. So let's take it, go up here, and if we've got, um, if we're in the else block, that means that we're in this area where it is reasonable to, to send the form. So we want to take the form, um, form from user. and the form to user. In other words, we need these attributes to be on this page, but here, right away, you can see that this is, this is just broken. These are things that we want to exist in the form data, but we don't want to actually make this selectable. That's, that's not right. So we need to switch this from, um, you can see what what's listed here is there are three users in the database. That's not correct. This form is already bound to the right values. We've already done the lookup um, in the view. I did the lookup of the person wanting to send the request, which is the logged in person, and the person that you want to send to, which is comes from the URL. And so that information is there. So what we really need is that we need to change the form widget type to be a hidden field. So let's bring up the Django docs and find the information about uh, widgets. Because there is a 
a hidden field, I believe. Or hidden input, yes. Um, and I always forget how to use these properly. So I think you say like widget equal form. I'm sure there's an example up above. Yeah, there it is. Widget equal forms, and then you give it the type. So we want to come down to the this area, and those other bits are true, and we want to say widget equal forms hidden input, and we don't need to give it any extra attributes. And we want to do the same thing on this guy. And so now, now we should be in good shape. If I refresh this, we've got, what do we have? We're back to a state where if we're looking under the covers in here, now we have three hidden pieces of data. We've got the CSRF token, which we require. We've got the from user and the to user. So we've got both sides of who are going to be connected to the invite, and there's their ID values there. So those will be in the form. And the other bit that we can send, or the last thing I think is worth doing, is switching. I realize that the, I don't like that button position. Users met. Like this one has it centered. Maybe I do like it. I don't know. Um, I'll hold off on repositioning that because it, it may be the right call to put it there. I don't, I'm trying to decide if I want it straight down. The other thing that before we call it done, the other thing I wanted to do is make sure that this looks good on mobile size. So here's you know, it's got. A, this is important that this app look good on mobile as well. And the, when I see it there, I think even if it's got text, like a paragraph of text, it's still going to look strange to have the button left aligned like that. So that's my gut telling me that that just feels unbalanced. So I think it's going to be paragraph button to do it. So like call all of your attention to like right to the middle of the screen, if at all possible. Okay, now, now this should work. Now we shouldn't get that error because the reason that it was given the error is because it actually, we didn't give it any from user or to user information. So we tried to do a lookup of that and said, I don't have this. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And the index page doesn't have anything yet, but we do see the invite sent message here. And so that's good news. If we go back and it reloads this page, you can see now that it's and now it's observed you've already sent an invite so there's nothing to see there so good good news let's go delete that again so that we can actually look at this reasonably easily i might leave i might leave this admin well i think i already had one up let's try and leave the admin up this time as we delete okay so what's what's left on this this thing in my opinion is functional at this stage i don't think i think it's lacking character um but again i'm trying to balance like i want this to be very simple 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 simplistic um and yet also communicate clearly what needs to happen so we're going to do that with a little bit of text and I think long term there could be some some kind of graphical depiction again like I said you know or I, I may have said earlier there's a, a maximum number of connections that we want to have on this app so the, the the max that I'm setting is like 500 so I want to be able to show give users a sense of this is how many you have left and in order to do that i need to put that information into the view context so that they can see the decision that they're about to make but before i even get to that let's um let's add 
Let's go ahead and center that button because it does look weird to me um, being positioned where it is. And I think the way that I want to do that is I'm going to center all, I'm going to center everything. And I know I said I, I didn't want to do that, but you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. And, and then we're going to say, and then inside, no, 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 that's not going to work. Rats. I was going to say center it all and then take the paragraphs that we don't want centered and explicitly move them to the left, but I think that's going to be the wrong approach. We might need to just center the button in a different way. Um, do we, can we get away with this by doing div? I think we can wrap it with a div tag and center that, and I think that should do the trick. We're going to have to do this in two places, I realize now. Let's make sure it works first, though. Okay. It did work. Put it right in the middle. And we need to do it on the error version of this as well. Because we want the symmetry. Is that right? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so now, regardless of whether or not this is a, a form with errors or a form with no errors, it's time to show some information, some paragraphs about what the user can expect of this. So we'll add a paragraph and we'll give it the same classes of an MB8 and text gray 800. And we don't have anything there yet, but we should see the spacing bump down. No, maybe not. Um, let's see. Do you want to add to user? Do you want to invite? Can't just add them to join your network. And what else can we say? We can say, this is where we can get informational. And you have remaining connections. You have that many remaining connection, and then we want to take this context variable, this is going to be a number, and we want to pipe it to pluralize, like that. So what that's going to do is going to add the S when it's a number greater than 1, um, and then when it is 1, it'll say one, 1 connection, and when it's 0, it would go back to 0 connections. So pluralize is kind of cool. You have, or, or the other way to say this is, do we want to do it with remaining connections, or do we want to show it as like a, a meter of, you know, like you've used 100 of your 500 connections. I think it's, I think just having, a, a single number is probably adequate. 
um, yeah, to add to your network. Oh, that's way too much space between those two paragraphs. All right, so let's fix that up. Let's change this to like MB4. And what if we do the same here? No, I think that is eight. The problem, well, no, no, no. I think we need to leave it as four. Or we could make it conditional. Let's do that. If if there's an error, so we want to say if form errors, then if there's an error, that means there's going to be a thing below it. So I don't, in that case, I don't want as much spacing because it will have too much spacing between the paragraphs. So then we want MB4. Um, uh, else we want the full mb8 spacing to give it the right a good amount of spacing between this paragraph text and the button so that way it, it lets the button breathe um, but will be nice and clean when we have to display the error and we might now that I'm now that I'm seeing this, like this is informational stuff. I, I still think that's too big. Let's try two. Yeah, that feels nicer. This is informational stuff. And when we have an actual error, it needs to it needs to pop out. And so I think the way that I want to do that is with um, an error color. I don't know if we're going to use a red or an orange. I mean, the whole theme is kind of orange, so it, it seems fitting to use an orange color instead of a red, but I don't know if that's going to look weird or not, or not legible enough. Um, well, we can play with that. So this is a start. We'll come back and hold on. Maybe maybe we only want to display this text when you actually can send it, when there are no errors. And that actually solves some problems and helps it make more sense because if if you can't even send, what's the point of telling you how many connections you have? That that's the wrong messaging. So it should just say like you can't send this because you've already sent it, or you're you're trying to connect yourself, or whatever the other reasons are. There's no point in feeding you that information. So I think that what that does is it makes it so that this idea of having different spacing, it doesn't really matter. So we always want the MB8 all the time because we're going to assume that it's for when you only have a valid form. Which also means that we want to put the sexual text inside of the else block. So now we've got two different scenarios. We've got the scenario where um, Ah, this is all this is coming together. I'm I'm realizing more and more as I do this. There's also no need to have a form post at all if you have or the CSRF token outside of this. So we have two conditions where the the error state just needs to be the illusion of being a form and the actual positive state needs to be the real form. So the error state is going to have the fake button and you know the actual error but the form itself we should move down and put it in the else block okay so let's take 
the form and put it inside of here. And we want to move, indent all this stuff. Okay, so now our entire form only happens when there are no errors. So it's not even possible to send something unless you've got it all worked out. And now that we have all of that spaced properly, we can move that. And I realize that this div tag at the end is in the right, wrong indentation level. So now we've got now we've got the two two different stages here. We've got the error stage and the you're good to go. Let's send the information stage. If we refresh, um, let's go ahead and add. Now it's time to go back and add to the context and do the actual math. So, doo -doo -doo. trying to think of where to put the actual number. Because I, I think I want it to be a method on a, on a class. All right, let's let's start with a view, and let's let's see it hard coded first to make sure that the to make sure that the template is right. I'm pretty sure it is, but it'll be good to see it. So we'll say um, got the form, and let's say remaining connections. And that will be 458. I don't know. I'm picking a number. Hmm. Remaining connections. Did I spell that right? Nope. I, I said single here but it really is meant to be a plural. Okay. You have 458 remaining connections to add to your network. And yeah, that'll work for now. Now that I'm here, let's play with the spacing too. Let's give it a little bit more space between those. Okay. MB4 is fine. So we've got this. We click the button. It says the invitation is sent. So we should hit the back button and it should give us the error state. And it says you already haven't, you've already sent an invitation. You can't click this button anymore. It doesn't mean anything. I think I'm happy with the state of the template. I'm pretty sure that it's, it's done. The only thing left to do is actually to fill in, replace this 458 with real, real data, uh, which is, has no bearing on the rest of the template. So let's leave that alone. And we can clear this out in case we need to look at it again. All right. Now, what is remaining connections, though? I want to say remaining connections should be a property on the user. It makes sense. It is a really core concept to this application. And so you want to be able to ask, what are the user's remaining connections? And it's not like I want the actual remaining, like it doesn't mean anything. It's not like that's asking for data. It's really ask. it is an implied number um, because it's the absence of data. 
So I think it's totally reasonable to have that be this way. The other way I could do it is like say remaining connections count. Um, but I don't like that. So we're going to do it like this. And this is going to fail now because it's that attribute doesn't exist. So this should blow up with an exception. So we need to add to the user um, this notion of remaining connections. And I think that's going to come into play on the form as well. Well, this will change change the logic there in the future. Okay, this is fine for now. So we've got the max user connections is this constant that I have here. So to the way that we're going to do this is create a, a method that is going to take max user connections as a constant and subtract out, or out however many um, invites are uh, not in this accepted state. That's going to be the answer. So we'll go to the user model, it's one area. And the other one that we need to open up is the user uh, model tests, or test models. And we'll say def test remaining connections. And we also need to, so I don't have, the concept of a connection doesn't actually exist in the app yet today. So there's going to be some missing tests here. Um, so I'm actually going to put a to-do in the test to say, you know, I need to adjust the test once there are, are real connections that factor into that the calculus that goes into this uh, property. And we'll do um, uh, a user um, has a count of its remaining connections. Remaining available connections. That's that's that. And then we say we want this to be a property and we'll say remaining connections and get the number of remaining available connections. Now I'm doing not doing this in pure test driven development style. Um I should probably. So we want to assert that the actual value remaining connections is equal to, I guess we're going to do like 499. So our max is 500. And I'm going to add an invitation here that we're using the invite factory. And we will get the right answer. Now, the invites are in a different app, and if I add, shoot, did I mess this up already? Am I making a circular import? No, not yet. Question is, do I want to do this? So, there are two, hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think through this, the design of this. So one of the tricky parts with Django applications is that some applications do have a relationship with each other. It is very natural for an invitation model, which is all about connecting users together, to work with a user's application. But the question becomes, where do you put the methods? If you want to have methods that is the dealing with the interaction between models, in this case the interaction between invites and user and ultimately connections, a third thing, where does that live? Um, and, you know, sometimes, since a lot of applications deal with users, uh, the user class is a, is a pretty dangerous place to have, um, have logic kind of grow unbounded. 
And if you're not careful, then that class can become so big that it becomes unmanageable. And so the recommendation that I, I have or I would give to people and I, I apply myself is, especially when working in a big system, is if you need a method of two models that interact with each other, um, pick the one that has fewer methods. Because there's two ways to phrase this. Like um, you could be saying user remaining connections and then internally with that method know about the invite model and do the, the math of doing the subtraction. Or the, the invite could receive a user and do the calculation there. So, you know, if if my user model was already getting big, I'd be tempted to put this method that I'm about to write, this property that I'm about to write, on the invite model instead. However, um, I know that there's a future state where um, this property is also going to factor in uh, actual user connections, which I think I'm going to have live in the users app in all likelihood. And so that kind of weights the the design decision to move that more towards the user's app because now we're talking about the user and the connection model and the invite model is happens to be a, a collaborator. Um, so I think it's okay to bring the invite model into the, this user context to make the decision. Um, the danger of doing this and the danger of especially of putting up these things at the model layer is that you can get into circular import scenarios. So if I, for instance, added the invites model here and added the invite model, which I'm about to do, I think, and then I wanted to use the user model over here and then import, now we're suddenly with a circular import. And then you get into doing moving your imports inside of methods and it just starts getting nasty. Um, so I, I'm making the design and choice that to put, to actually import from invites here and cross apps, but I'm doing that deliberately. So we've got this, and it's going to fail. And it's going to say none is equal to four ninety can't is not equal to four ninety nine. That's a failure, which it should be. And so in our users test models area, we're going to also import um, from social invites. Oops, um, invites tests factories import invite factory and we're going to say the um, we're going to add an invite to him so invites only count on invites that you send so if somebody sends you an invite that doesn't count against your total so we're going to create and call the invite factory and the from user is going to be equal to this user right here. And that should be, that's the proper data that we want for this. And so now we've got, um, we want to do this calculation. So we need the constants from, that come from a module that I put in the app. And so we could say from dot import constants and the answer is to do constants max user connections minus some number of invites so invite objects filter where from user is equal to self. That is the user instance right now. And we want to say count. I'm going to start with this. And we need to import the invite model from social invites models import invite. Okay, so now I've got this property and this should work, but it's wrong where you have to be careful with your tests. And it's wrong because um, the accepted invites don't count against your total. Because what happens, what, what I'm going to do 
is once a user, uh, the, the other on, user on the receiving end accepts the invite, it's going to actually create a connection object and then transition the invite to an accepted state. And when the invite is in the accepted state, that shouldn't count against uh, the total because then you would like double count. You'd count for um, a connection, which will eventually be part of this calculation, and the accepted invitation. So that'd be double counted. So we don't want that. So we need to create another invite to make the test more accurate. And it's still a from user. But we want to set the status of this one. The, the default status is pending. We want to set the status to invite, invite status accepted. And I need to add the models here, the model itself. Okay. So now, right now, this test is going to fail because it's going to say 498. But that's not correct. So I need to come up to the count here, and I need to say um, it needs to exclude the uh, the accepted state, which is something I did in the form. Right there. In fact, I'll put it here and say count because that looks good. So now if I run this, it should pass. So now we're actually calculating Mac the remaining connections out of this. And right now this is a property and it's doing a property that's doing a query on the database. If I were to find myself using this property often in a single view, I would make this a cached property so that it would cache it for the context of the request response lifecycle and only do one database call. But since I think it's only going to be used like once and then passed into a context in a view and calculated that one time generating the context, um, I don't think I need to do that. Okay, I think that brings us to a conclusion. We've got now a template. Let's revisit the template. And we can close the test. We've got the template that will render errors if there are errors. And gray out a, show a grayed out button. There's no form. And then we've got a form when there are no errors. And it prompts the user with like, do you want to invite? So it's asking them the question. It's telling them how many connections they have remaining. And it tells them, it adds the actual form information that needs to be there hidden. And then we actually have the button to submit. And we, we did the button and checked everything out. So it was all, all good. Then we added the actual model property to add context and added a two user to the context and made some changes there too. So I think that was all good. Um, so I think that brings us to the end. I think we're back in a spot now where we can refresh this and 500 remaining connections. Now I can't click this and then go back and see 499 because the message will be gone. But the math is right right now. There's, there's the, the max and we aren't using any invites yet. So I think that this is how I want this page to look. It's a fairly, not fairly, it's a very simple page. It's a header, two paragraphs, and a button. Um, let's check on it on the mobile size to make sure it looks decent. And, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do with mobile stuff. Like, I can't control all of the text. I, I can reword things, I guess. But if you think about it, this text, this paragraph is dynamic. Um, so even though it might be nice to get the word network up on the same line, you have to, there's two things that make this super dynamic and not worth thinking too hard about this. Uh, one is that the username here is going to change. So it's four characters now, but we showed an example earlier where it was uh, eight characters, another one where it was 13. And so that's gonna really mess with this. The other thing is I'm, I'm using a Pixel 2 size, but uh, mobile phones come in all different sizes. So if we were to look at an iPhone, you know, it gets skinnier, or if you get an iPhone Plus, it gets fatter and fits on one line, 
or a Kindle Fire. It gets the you know, tablet size, and you know. So, in other words, you can't. You can do your best to to make something that works well on all sizes, and you should try and make your designs look good on everything. But there are some things where you have just just have to say, this is this is what it's going to be. This is good enough, and are you you content with that? So I think to me, this looks good enough. We've got the logo. There's the headers. There's the very simple page to go there, um, and you can go click this, and it'll take us to the index. And so the flow is very straightforward, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So what what can we look at when we're all said and done with this stream for the evening? Is we made some changes. This is the summary of the stream is like we've made changes. We're the whole goal was to get this template uh, in the right shape for this uh, sending of invitations, and we found that I didn't have the form inputs hidden, so we needed to add the widget. We added some information to the context, so we moved this variable out of the get call and then added it to the context, and we added this uh, additional property to the context as well that is coming from the user and this will work consistently because this view is a view where you have to be logged in login is required so it's going to get the, a real user instance we're not going to run into problems with um, this user being an anonymous user so this will remaining connections property will always be available so that's that's good news and then here's the actual implementation. We talked about why um, why it's okay to do this coupling. I think it's very related and appropriate for the user to have that. And it's kind of critical to the, the user model. So I think it's a decent thing to put here. Uh, but we talked about when you might want to move them to other spots. And we wrote uh, some test code to test out the property and got all of our template filled out. And with that, I think I'm going to, let's run it through. There's a couple more things to check, I guess. There's, we want to make sure we've got full test coverage before we totally close out, which we do. And I think I've got a MyPy check. Yep. So the code's all checking out. And so we'll add it and commit it and say we're going to finish, um, finish the send invite template. And that fixes issue number. Let's see. It fixes what? Issue 11. So let's push that up. Check the box to get that satisfaction there. And this should refresh. Whoops. Oh, I must have. All right. Fine. I I had uh, updates to packages that were done by um, Dependabot, and I guess I hadn't pulled. So we're going to merge that those changes in and push this back up. Okay, that view is done. You can see I also added a bunch of other issues that we can work on. We're not going to work on them this evening. Uh, but we'll get to some of them in future streams. Most likely next time, where if I don't have the opportunity to work on this between streams, we'll probably work on this periodic task of um, expiring invitations, or uh, maybe not that one, actually, probably the periodic task to send invitations and see what that looks like. And we, we talked last time about what that will be like because we'll use the Heroku scheduler to do that on a fairly regular basis so we're going to hook all that up uh, I think and get that good and tested um, so I think that that brings us to a conclusion for the evening I'm going to take the content and put it up on YouTube so if you want to refer back to anything that was there and where we started with this process and we, we basically created a template from scratch so there's a lot to learn there um, but uh, my content's up on YouTube you're welcome to um, follow me here, follow me on YouTube, or subscribe, I guess is the word over there. Um, 
and watch for when I post content. I try and stream uh, basically every every Wednesday evening at, at 9 p.m. Eastern time, my, my local time, and uh, teach you about Django. So hope you learned something new this evening, and I will see you next time. Take care.